Welcome to this encore presentation of the Global Missions Podcast. We are taking a short break from production over the summer and will be launching season two on September 6th. We are looking forward to sharing some exciting new interviews and resources with you. In the meantime, we are reprising or replaying some of the most popular episodes here on the podcast. Let me remind you that you can also find show notes for each episode and leave us feedback on the website at globalmissionspodcast.com. And now, Here's one of our most downloaded episodes from season one. Business as mission, or BAM, as it's sometimes called, is a bit of a buzzword in the missions community today. In this episode of the Global Missions Podcast, we're going to learn more about what BAM is and how God is using it in different places, as well as some practical ideas about how churches and business people can use their talents and expertise for the glory of God. to the Global Missions Podcast, a podcast for Christ followers who want to participate more effectively in God's work both at home and to the ends of the earth. Visit us at globalmissionspodcast.com to find show notes, resources, and previous episodes. Here's your host, Rob Magwood, better known to his friends as Mags. Hi, everyone. We are very glad that you've joined us as we continue to discover how to participate in Global Missions more effectively. I'm your host, Mags, and I am really looking forward to this interview. Today, we're going to be talking about business as mission, or BAM. Our expert guest is Larry Sharp. He's the founder of IBEC Ventures, an organization to help build sustainable businesses that change lives and transform communities. Just before we get to that interview, we'd like to share with you this resource. Have you taken Kairos? The Kairos course is a nine session interactive course on world Christian mission. It's designed to educate, inspire, and challenge Christians to active and meaningful participation. Visit kairoscourse.org today and find a course near you. Now, here's our interview with today's expert guest. Well, hello again, everyone. I'm pleased to welcome you to today's expert interview. Our guest is Larry Sharp. For those of you that haven't had a chance to meet Larry, he has served uh, in Brazil with Crossworld for 21 years before becoming the vice president of Crossworld in 1993. Larry currently lives in Oregon with his wife, Vicki, where he serves as vice president emeritus for Crossworld and also as a business consultant. He is the founder and director of Strategic Training and Partnerships for IBEC, which is short for International Business and Education Consultants. I am really looking forward to this interview. Larry, welcome to the program. Thank you, Max. It's great to uh, talk with you again. It's been a few years, and uh, uh, what a pleasure. So appreciate being invited. Looking forward to sharing especially about this topic of business as mission, but just before we get into the main discussion, we'd love to hear just a little bit about yourself, who you are, and how the Lord has brought you to this place and to be passionate about missions. Yes, I I was born in Vancouver and uh, grew up in BC and Alberta and uh, went to uh, two schools there, uh, Prairie Bible College back in the 60s and uh, the University of Calgary as well. Uh, as far as my understanding of missions, my, my dad uh, came to Christ uh, later in life and uh, turned to, toward uh, Bible training and ended up in the pastorate. And so he pastored several churches in BC and Alberta, and uh, uh, he was very missional. And so I'm very thankful for my father's heritage. And also the college I went to was, uh, was very mission-minded. And so I ended up uh, taking a, a degree in business and joining uh, the mission UFM in 1970. So your degree all the way back in, in your uh, studies was about business. Uh, yeah, mm. and, and maybe a, a point to, uh, uh, to uh, as a takeoff from that, uh, even though I went to Bible college uh, and then I did a degree in business, um, I, I was still focused on missions. And mm. and as, as we listened to God's people in the pulpit in the 60s, uh, the message was often well, uh, why don't you uh, give it up for Jesus? And so th- there is an element of sacrifice uh, in the Great Commission. But the whole idea was that if you're an engineer, if you're a teacher, if you're a medical person, whatever, 
maybe you should give that up for the higher calling of being a missionary. And, and I did that. And I have no regrets. Mm. Uh, and that's still a very valid uh, message. However, the, the message that I try to relay to people in my sphere of influence and in colleges where I teach and so on uh, is, why don't you use it all for Jesus? Mm. Now, th- there's a different nuance to that, of course. But the idea is that if you're an accountant, if you're a marketing expert, if you're an engineer, whatever you might be, uh, the, and, and that's how God's wired you in, in terms of your professional c- capacity, that, then that is an important component in who you are, and God wants to use that. So yeah. uh, it's kind of a long answer to your question. It's but. super, super. Well, this uh, idea of business as mission, or BAM, is a bit of a buzzword that we hear these days, uh, sometimes from mission organizations. Would you just take a minute and define what, what is BAM and why is it so important these days? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I realize that it is a buzzword, but, but I kind of, I, I don't really think of it as a buzzword. I, I think of it as a return uh, to living out your faith in the marketplace. It's a rediscovery of the priesthood of believers. And uh, I, I think that, uh, of course, the, the Luther and Calvin and others in the Reformation uh, brought us back to that. But, but if you go back to the first century, you, you see that the church being persecuted in Jerusalem and leaving town. And all the apostles, the church leaders, the pastors, the missionary minded people stayed in Jerusalem, it says in Acts chapter 8. And the Christians were dispersed. And they simply lived out their faith in the marketplace. And uh, for me, business as mission probably could have been more appropriately worded, uh, something like all professions in ministry or business for transformation Mm -hmm. or or, or something else. But the the term kind of came into vogue in the late 90s. And the Luzon Committee picked it up and really began to define it and uh, help us all understand it. Mm -hmm. But, But it really means... Uh, in its in its core essence is that be, be in the marketplace, be in business, be there where the where the people are, and live out the mission of God. Mm-hmm. So, so so it's not missions per se as we thought about it in the 20th century. Mm-hmm. It, it's 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 living out the mission of God in the marketplace. And uh, and just uh, so some quick reasons why this is important. Uh, I I think that in in terms of our uh, the mission world today. Um, it's important for us to to really focus on the Great Commission, what was really given to everybody. And and, uh, in a certain sense, we outsourced Mm -hmm. the missionary industry to the professional qualified people. And I'm not opposed to that. I am. I'm a product of that. I'm involved in that. And and that is important. I I think that missionaries, uh, as we've known them, need to be called and so on. But but in another sense, all of us can be involved. And, and so I've met so many business people who feel that, well, they, their skill, their capacity is not quite up to snuff spiritually, but they'll do their part and they'll pray and they will give. But I think the business as mission brings everybody into that. We can talk about that in a minute. Uh, and and that's for, the, the, that, that is a, a key thing for me. The whole body of Christ can be involved with this, and I can explain that later. Mm-hmm. But a second reason is that um, uh, the business as mission brings, in terms of uh, of cross cultural ministry, it brings the great commandment back into the gospel. And, and I think uh, we evangelicals kind of marginalized ourselves from the social gospel beginning in the 1920s and clear up into the 60s and 70s. And and, and we we say, well, that's that's really for somebody else. We we just focus on the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But but as you go to countries with with the gospel and you you, uh, there, there's so much unemployment, there's so much poverty, there's so much injustice. uh, We should tie the human condition into the spiritual condition. And, and, and the great commandment of Jesus to love your neighbor, what does that look like? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it looks like job creation for, for us in, in this uh, business this mission thing. And, and then just one other qu- quick uh, reason why this is important is that m- most people don't realize that 4 billion people, over two-thirds of the world's population, live in countries that do not, do not pr- allow missionaries to enter. In other words, they do not give religious workers visa 
Mm -hmm. Now, there's all kinds of ways to respond to that. But one way, and I'm not saying this is the only way, but one way is to uh, go into the country and start a business and employ people. Uh, that's the great commandment and create value so, so as to be there legitimately with um, uh, they want you to come. <clears throat> you know, you, we in the West have become accustomed to a very cognitive way of learning. And most of the world are, are all learners, and they learn by uh, observing and doing. And business as mission really allows us to live out the gospel in the w workplace so that people can see us. Mm -hmm. They can see us on the good days and our bad days. And mm -hmm. over a long time, as we live with Jesus in that experience, that p people see the difference. So, so that, to me, that's a big, big plus for business as mission. Because it's not us going in and telling or proclaiming only, which we obviously have to do, but it allows us to live it. To have legitimate access is uh, is increasingly challenging in, in some places, um, and I would say, it, with the whole idea of the secular and the sacred, some of us as organizations, uh, classical mission agencies, are trying to wrestle with that and say, "Boy, have we." Have we stayed in that uh, expert zone, so to speak? We've been experts in this. How do we carefully rethink that and, and more appropriately invite everyone to be part of this? Some of my experience with um, preparing for this conversation and talking to some business people is they are delighted to be considered for some of their business skills rather than being approached just as donors. Right. As we ask them to contribute some of their expertise, either as consultants or maybe even as goers, we're expanding right. expanding what has, uh, in many cases, been a more limited view of who can be a missionary. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and I, I think that uh, as I've kind of been, been focused on the people in the pew with a wide range of skills, and not just business, it can be medicine, it can be education and various mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, when they get to realize that their skill can be applied mm -hmm. to some of these businesses overseas, for example, as consultants, coaches, and so on. Mm -hmm. They are they're being a part of the Great Commission, and 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 you have to remember that these people in the pews of our Canadian churches, you know, they love they love Jesus just like you and me, and mm -hmm. and, and they don't need to join the professional missionary enterprise, mm -hmm. but 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 they know the gospel is important. They know that people are lost, and they can apply their skill, and, and that's what's exciting to me. Mm -hmm. I wonder, Larry, if you just take a couple of minutes on terms here. We've used BAM or Business's Mission. You've commented on that already. There's Business for Transformation. Uh, tent making is another popular term. Would you just take a minute on those terms and say, what are there differences? Are they synonymous? What's going on here? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, I'm not going to resolve it with a, a, a couple of comments here. But Generally speaking, tent making, which is the older term uh, that's been around for years, basically refers in today's terminology mostly to people who go abroad with their profession and with their job and, and take a job overseas. So for, for example, a former student of mine was an engineer and uh, um, a petroleum engineer, and he took a job intentionally in Saudi Arabia. And, and the whole idea was that he professionally qualified to take this job. And uh, and he's there as a light in a dark place. Mm -hmm. Now, th 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 that's tent making. Now, business as mission is taking your business overseas or starting a business. Uh, the, the way I often like to think of, think of it is uh, tent making is um, taking a job overseas mm -hmm. for missional mm -hmm. purposes, mm -hmm. whereas BAM, business as mission, is creating a job overseas. Mm -hmm. For missional purposes, so there's a fine fine line of difference in some cases, but it, there, it's rather distinct in yeah. other ways. Yeah, that's helpful. And, and, and then one one final comment: the the term business for transformation for me is is, a, is synonymous with the business as mission. Okay, uh, I could give you another quick story which sure. highlights. Um, I, I think it's very important in our world to be um, people of integrity and uh, and have a viable identity. And so here's an example. Uh, if you look on a, uh, I won't mention the names, but if you look on a, on the state of Gujarat, India uh, website, that they are very interested in bringing tourists to that country or to that state in that, okay. that country. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in business terminology, we call that creating value. Uh, we call that a business opportunity. 
And, and, we, and so in God's providence, he brought, we got in contact with somebody who was qualified to start a business there. Mm-hmm. And, and so he goes in, he and his wife have gone in with a full business visa. They have full missional training. They went to a, a, a Bible college that you would recognize if I said the name, and you would, you would say, that's good. And, um, and they went there to start this business, and the business has done very well. And uh, it's, it's made a lot of money. And, and at the same time, this guy is, and his wife are committed to sharing Christ wherever they can. And they work with a mostly Muslim uh, population in that country, or in that state of India. And, uh, and we've seen people start to come to Christ because of that. So, 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 so the idea is that that's a true startup. And, and, uh, and he had w- what it takes on paper and in some experience but he really was dependent on God's people in this country to, to rally around him. So the way they rallied around him was, number one, uh, they helped capitalize the business. Mm-hmm. And number two, uh, we had four different coaches and consultants from time to time helping him get started, helping with the legal accounting mm-hmm. issues, tax issues, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned along the way that it was a profitable business. I wonder, have you sensed any tension along the way, either with believers in in congregations, in the churches, or with mission agencies, because the word profit is involved here? The the whole BAM uh, definition is really um, focused on what what we call the triple bottom line. And the the, the first point is that it should be profitable and sustainable. Secondly, it, it should create value, and usually that's jobs. And the third is spiritual capital or the making of disciples for Jesus. And so in all of our consulting and all of those who uh, send these people abroad, they really keep focused on those three things. And now back to the profit question, if you don't have a profitable business in these countries, you don't last very long. So your viability for existence is that you're real. You have a real business And, and, and that allows you to be there and to, to, to demonstrate, uh, incarnate the gospel in the way you run that business, and that, that attracts people to who you are and who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is, is, is really not at all in the pews. The problem is with, with the ministerial class and, the, and some of the mission committee people who, who, who are still in the mindset that, that profit is something that uh, is evil. And mm-hmm. the, the problem, I, I just presented a paper at the Evangelical Mission, Missiological Society, and, and I really said those who attack business as mission and capitalism and profit are, are generally attacking the abuses of it, and w- which, is, which we all should. Sure. But, but, but not profit is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the, there's, there's, a, there's a great little book on that by um, a theologian at the University of Phoenix who, who says he goes through all the scriptures uh, of, of how God uses business and profit in, in the Bible. And, mm-hmm. and so there's nothing wrong with profit, but there's lots wrong with the abuses of it. Sure, sure. I wonder if we think of a person, a listener out there, who has some business experience, a woman or a man, and they have never seen really the connection between their skills and passions and missions before, if you speak from the, the point of view of organizations who are participating in this, what are characteristics that uh, organizations doing BAM are looking for? Yeah, uh, we, we kind of divide it into two parts, and, and you've mentioned them. Uh, people who are going to go overseas and actually be a part of one of these businesses, and, and, and that's a certain uh, recruiting mm-hmm. domain. They're goers. Mm -hmm. But they go as business people. Now, they're not all entrepreneurs by any means. Mm. Uh, Some of them simply uh, contribute to some business skills, management, marketing, Mm -hmm. accounting, bookkeeping, whatever. Uh, But they all have a a good, clear understanding of the Great Commission Mm -hmm. and and an understanding of their part. in. in, When we we consult with these businesses, we have a business plan Mm -hmm. and we have a ministry plan. And it works together. Mm-hmm. And they're accountable for that. We, we try to keep these things on the rails, uh, uh, doing both the, the mission and the business. Um, and, and so the first response to your question uh, is that we need to see this happening in Canada. In other words, if you have a person say, oh, that sounds great. I want to go to some faraway place. OK, let's see how God is using you in your business here. And so, so in terms of a qualification, we want to want to see it being played out in their in their marketplace here, wherever they whatever they are, and that would be a qualifying 
uh, qualifier for us to be able to uh, to, to to demonstrate that and observe that and uh, and talk about that before we actually start talking about doing it in some faraway place. Well, you mentioned the people who actually lay down their lives here to go. We refer to people who stay here as senders, and that's another role that that uh, business people can play on this on this side then too. Are there ways that you've seen business people that stay in Canada help business people who are intentionally being salt and light in unreached places? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, uh, I, t- I talked to, in fact, I, I know this couple quite well, uh, that they, they retired, sold their business in Western Canada and uh, were wondering what's, what's next. And uh, e- what they did is they got involved with coaching uh, some some b- businesses, two different businesses in uh, South Asia, mm. uh, one in Iraq and one in one of the stand countries, and they were coaching them. Uh, had they went to visit, stayed a week or so, and came back, and from their computer continued to coach and uh, pro- provide consulting expertise, and uh, so that's one way that gave them great fulfillment, and they continued to do so. Um, and another way, which sometimes combines with this way, is investing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the capitalization of these businesses is always a tough go. And, uh, and, and similar to how missionaries depend on God's people to support their missionary efforts, these businesses depend on people to help uh, them get started. And mm-hmm. we call it startup capital. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got involved in some businesses doing that. Uh, that that's a second way. Uh, another way is, is to simply be an advocate mm-hmm. for all this. Of course, learn more about it. Be be an advocate, and and I'm a, uh, I'm a real strong advocate wherever I go for missions committees, to to look at the young people in their church, and instead of saying you know you need to be a missionary, they say you, you, by the time they graduate from high school or get involved in college. Uh, how does how has God wired you? What what do you like to do? Well, what are the things you want to study? And and you know, believe it or not, for, uh, you know, people love accounting. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. then that be the very best accountant you can be. Mm-hmm. And we want to champion that in the church, and we want to help make you that, and we want you to be a kingdom accountant. Mm-hmm. A- and that's transferable to the world. Well, in your experience, uh, Larry, you've had a lot of experience at this, I know. I wonder if there are certain common mistakes that you've seen or what cautions you would have for those of us who are learning about BAM and thinking this is something we should get into. Probably the biggest mistake is thinking, with regard to business as mission, is Mm -hmm. thinking that anybody can do this. Uh, I know a lot of people, I've met many over the years, who have been in the mission world and they're in countries that the doors are closing to missionaries. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, what am I going to do? And they, oh, oh, I could become a business person. Well, not so fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be in business is a, is a high and holy calling in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And you have to be wired for that. You have to be able to have uh, s- s- some inclination. Uh, and you have to have some training. And so... I think most of us can complement these businesses, but not everybody can really run one or start one. So that's the biggest mistake that I see. It's just not a way to get a visa. Mm-hmm. If you, it, it, this has to be something of integrity. It has to be able to show an income statement. It has to be able to show a profit. It has to be able to show employees. It has to, be, it has to look, look like a business and be a business. Sure. And, and so a common mistake is to think, well, anybody can do that. And, uh, and maybe a second one is... Um, it's a lot of hard work and time consuming and uh, maybe unrealistic expectations would be another uh, difficulty that we address. Um, uh, a third one real quick is, is, is just that uh, a lot of things have to come together. Are you the right person in the right place with the right product, with the right price, with a customer who will buy your product? You don't have a, a, a business if you don't have a customer. Right. Who will buy what you're offering, whether it's a good or a service. And so all of that has to come together. And th- that's how we help people, uh, the business consultants we all work with, that they're able to help people focus on those things and understand that. But so, so we're always saying not so fast. We have to mm-hmm. work through this. And, you know, in Canada, probably eight or nine out of 10 uh, startup entrepreneurs fail once or twice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so and that's normal. Mm-hmm. So we, we really help them to recover from that and to move on to the next thing and kind of work through all these issues and just kind of slow them down and realize that uh, that to do it well, it takes time. 
Mm -hmm. Do you find that the classical mission agency is helpful in these endeavors? Um, are, we, are we doing a good job of, of engaging this? Uh, <laughs> I, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I, mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I'm proud to be able to say I, I think your organization, and, and neither one of us are here to pr propel our organizations, but mm -hmm. I think your organization has, is really getting a good handle on it. And all of us have a long ways to go. But, mm -hmm. but I, I think that most – we consult in I, IBEC Ventures, the consulting group I represent. Mm -hmm. uh, we've probably consulted with 30 different agencies. We've been in their home offices. We've, tried, we've presented it to them, and we, we, we've shared how we can help or how God's people in business can help. And um, I would say two-thirds of agencies, at least this is my experience, are still dabbling in it. That They're still investigating it or the, or they're – they're not sure they want to go there. And the other third are, are taking some honest steps to, in that direction. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's hopeless, but it's, it's simply, you know, in the agency world, we did not recruit for business. Right, we, right. We, we, we recruited people for professional missionary endeavors. Mm -hmm. And uh, that meant Bible training, that meant uh, cross-cultural training and all those good things, which are a tremendous asset. Mm -hmm. But, but um, I think agencies either need to <clears throat> start to recruit people who have business wearing or partner with organizations that are, that are doing it so that, the, that they accomplish their goals. That is establishing mm -hmm. of a church overseas. As we think about churches, about congregations, and if a church, is, imagine someone on a missions committee hearing this podcast and saying, we, should, we shouldn't consider more of this, what what are some of the first steps that they should take? What would you recommend them do to, um, to really learn and, and uh, start to get their hearts and minds around how to do this well? Well, I, yeah, I, I think a uh, first step would be to, uh, to, to start to read and to, uh, to, to understand uh, some of these things. I mean, we're just scratching the surface here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th th this is not a, an easy thing. There's lots of challenges. There's lots of issues. Uh, there's lots of failures uh, out there, and and uh, to to really understand the playing field, uh, and I think that that can be done in different ways. Uh, there's lots of good websites out there. There's uh, lots of good books out there now, mm -hmm. and and there's seminars. And uh, one of the things we do is we come into a, a church mission committee and just talk through some of the issues and try to say well, where is it you'd like to go? Mm -hmm. uh, is this something you're truly interested in? And here are some steps that would uh, help you realize your dream. Uh, I'll just give you one quick example. I, uh, a partner of mine, we consulted with the missions committee at a, at a fairly large church. They had about 6,000 uh, attendees. They had a very active uh, missions committee, missions program. <clears throat> and the thing they were struggling with was uh, the, trying to make their short-term trips viable and get people to actually go on them. Well, to make a long story short, after we spent uh, quite a bit of time with them, they said they were going to abandon the term mission trip. And they were going to call it a medical trip, or they were going to call it a business marketing trip, or they were going to call it something else. And, mm -hmm. and so th they decided they would tap in to the skills in the church and say, mm -hmm. we need your skill mm -hmm. in Honduras, or we need your skill in Tajikistan. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then those skills were brought together to really propel the gospel in those places. So it wasn't just a mission trip and to see what was going on or, or to help build a cabin and none of us are builders, you know, or to, or to teach DVBS through translation. There's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with all those things, mm -hmm. uh, but the, with the idea was to tap into their skill. So that was a result of a consulting trip to help people to kind of see this a little bit more clearly. Excellent. Well, I know, as you said, Larry, we've just scratched the surface here. And I'll, again, I'll mention the show notes for anyone who's listening, but also in the show notes, not during the podcast here, but we're asking Larry for resources, websites, books, articles that he would recommend. You can find those also in the show notes. We won't go into those now. But Larry, if there are listeners who want to learn more about this, uh, perhaps from IBEC or from you somehow, how can they get in touch with you? How can they learn more from you? Yeah, uh, anybody's free to uh, write me. Uh, my, my email is um, Larry.Sharp, that's my name with a dot in the middle of it, with no E on the end of Sharp, at Ibec Ventures, I B E C Ventures.com. And that would be my email and uh, one of my emails, and be happy to respond to anybody and direct them toward other resources they might be interested in. 
hope you found today's interview to be both informative and inspiring. If you missed anything or would like to check out the resources or links mentioned during the interview, you can find the show notes we've prepared at our website, globalmissionspodcast.com. You can also use the website or our Facebook page to suggest a particular topic or expert you'd like to hear featured on this program. The Global Missions Podcast is co-sponsored by the Jaffrey Centre for Global Initiatives and Send International of Canada. Thanks for listening in. I'm your host, Mags, and I invite you to join us again in two weeks when we'll continue to explore this grand adventure of being Christ's witnesses to the ends of the earth.